uh, I did uh, the heroin, the cocaine, the morphine, the speed, the MDA, the THC, the mescaline. And I'm sure a lot of viewers would recognize the names of these drugs if they go back that far, including some grass and hash occasionally, but uh, that was just kind of a filler. My drug of choice was speed, and uh, that's how I overdosed. But um, just before all of that, you know, in them 10 years, I had to uh, provide for my habit. And a lot of it was uh, just uh, doing things and uh, stealing and robbing. I've done time for robberies and I did break and enterings and other things that, that I'm not proud of, but. All drug related. All drug related. Supporting the habit. Support the habit. The addiction. The addiction. In 1971, I was at a place where I had cause to celebrate. And uh, I met my brother, Tom, and uh, we went into the Parkdale Hotel. Back in them days, out front of the Parkdale Hotel, you always had a cab, uh, police, and ambulance. It's just sitting there because that was that style in them days. Anyway, we went inside, and gee, we're celebrating. I'm having a couple of beers and so on. At this time, I'm not a born-again Christian yet. And so sitting there, um, I get up to go to the washroom after a couple of beers. And, and in the washroom, I hear this voice. It says, why don't you take some of them pills that you got on you and really have a glow? Now, on me, I had 60 Valium, and uh, they were high potency. One would knock you out and make you sleep for a day or so. So I went in you there. You had 60. I had 60 of them. And so I went into the washroom, and I listened to the voice. So I uh, put my hand into the sink in the washroom, took a couple of them, and knocked them back. I went back out, had another couple of beers, and then the voice came again. It was stronger. And it says, why don't you really get a glow on? Why don't you just take all of them? And so I thought that was a pretty good idea. I thought, hey, you know, I've been a drug addict for a while. I can handle it, blah, blah. All the lies that the devil speaks to, and they're doing, and he's doing a lot of lies today. People are ODing on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And drugs definitely open the door to yeah, those voices. They sure do. Mm -hmm. Okay, I went back to my chair in the hotel. And within a few minutes, 20 minutes or so, I, not, I was passed out and I fell on the floor. Well, my brother and a bouncer picked me up and they took me outside. My brother could have put me in an ambulance, but he didn't. He put me in a cab and he drove us to a friend's place in Parkdale who was a speed dealer because my drug of choice was speed. And uh, anyways, they laid me on the bed and he went back out to his backyard to get a stash of speed because it was a stimulant and they knew that I somehow had was overdosing on Valium. That's the way we thought. Um, any case, they come back in, they're mixing up this big hit of speed and I'm laying there and I'm lifeless. But while they left to go in the backyard, my, my spirit rose up to the corner of the room and I began to look at my body and I became very sad because I knew that this was it. I was dead, that's it. And I was going down a tunnel, and as I went down to the tunnel, I landed on a space, a floor, and one demon that looked like, uh, you know, eight feet tall, they had heads of birds and stuff like that, and they were strong. And one took this arm, and one took that arm, and they led me up a, a kind of a stairway, wide and long, and when we reached to the top, I had hit a plateau. And I was just, they were just in motion to throw me in, and I don't know how come or why, but I yelled out the name of Jesus Christ. I said, Jesus, right then, because Jesus is the dynamite of heaven. Mm. He's the king of kings and so on. Anyway, these demons flew off like they were blown up or something. And I came back through there to the tunnel and back into my body. Now, because I was dead for 10 minutes, the next, and it took four years before I got born again. But the next four years, I started carrying guns and doing more robberies and stuff like that. And I don't remember much of the four years. I couldn't say with certainty what I had done. It was very foggy. So one day I'm sitting on 87 Woodbine. It's 12 o'clock in, in, in Toronto, just south of Queen Street. And I'm sitting there and I'm downstairs in this little rooming house. Because after 10 years I had come, I had lived well, but I lived very poorly. It was an up and down type of life. And I'm sitting down there. There's one light in a downstairs. And I'm sitting there with my face in my hands, asking God or someone to help me. 
And so just then, it wasn't the day before or the day after. It wasn't three hours later. It was exactly then that my brother, who did get born again three years earlier, he stopped the car and he came in. And he said to my wife, Donnie, he says, where's Mike? Well, I was downstairs. He come down the stairs. He says, listen, I've talked to you about Jesus Christ before. I've sent you letters and all the rest of it. He says, but I'm telling you right now, this is maybe my last time telling you. You need Jesus Christ. And but at this time, I say, I know. Well, he just started weeping. I know why he's weeping. He's been working on you for years. He was and, working on me for three years. And all of a years. sudden, in this moment, you're ready. You're open. You're willing. Yes. The Lord had brought me to that point. Well, for, that was my brother Bob. For him, when he got born again in 72, he says, Lord, allow me to lead both my older brothers to Christ. Well, I have one brother who's done 15 years. In and, prison. In prison. And he was in prison. And Bob went to visit him and prayed with him. And Tom got born again. So he led him to the Lord. Now he led me to the Lord. God answers prayer. This is a family rescued. Well, I mean, you know that many people are doing away with the idea of hell, even though Jesus talked more about hell than heaven. What do you say to them when they say, oh, a loving God wouldn't even create a hell. Never mind, send anyone there. I say that if this is man's tradition, you better smarten up. Because the Bible talks about a hell. When I was in hell, I seen things. I seen people weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I understand what you're saying. I pastored for decades. But I'm telling you, they need to smart, smarten up. You may be someone that's just babysitting your church into heaven. I'm thinking God allows that. But you need to preach the truth. I'm telling you, you need to preach the truth. There is a hell and you need to tell your people about it as well as everything else. You have been on the receiving end of many miracles. We don't have time to flesh it all out, but your first cancer journey. Yes. 2002, 2003. What a wild ride you have had with your health. Really 12 years. 12 years. Two cancers and cirrhosis of the liver. Yes. Hep C. <laughs> How's your health today? My health Mike? is perfect. Perfect. From the year 2000, as I was a pastor, to the year 2012. I was sick, mostly up and down, but mostly sick. There was times I couldn't raise my hand above my head. But today I'm very, very strong and just ready to do it. I want to go out and talk to people about uh, Jesus Christ. I want to mention this, though, in terms of the brain damage, because I was dead 10 minutes with the hell, mm -hmm. what I did do is when I got born again, I took the Bible and just read it. I marked things out, underlined things. It was so dog-eared that I had to throw it away after five months. Healed but after five months, mm. yes, reading the word, confessing the word over me. You've had just a, an interesting life. I want people to see your extended family in uh, just the blessing of God in your life. And we, we have uh, books like To Hell and Back, Hep C, Sentenced to Death, uh, about the healing of uh, stage four cirrhosis of the liver. I, I lost one brother to drugs and a sister to cirrhosis of the liver. Mm. Uh, I know what these diseases uh, do, and you are just a marvel. These are available, by the way, free at your website, www.rotm.ca. What's the R-O-T-M? Revival of Truth Ministries. Mm. And uh, it's a lot to do with... Uh, knowing who the Lord is by way of through the Holy Spirit, and He is the Spirit of truth.